So, all right. Well, let me just give you a, a real quick background. Um, like Ashley said, we've been doing this for about a, a little bit over a decade to be exact. It's more closer to about 11 and a half years. Um, give you a, a little bit of background on just myself. Um, I have uh, been married for the last 32 years. Um, I have four great kids. Um, I think we got a picture here to to show everybody. Um, I kind of like to show them off whenever I can, but it gives you a little bit more of a, a feeling of of uh, where I come from and who I am. So my oldest is a girl and um, our daughter is uh, Kayla. She's kind of in the middle there of the picture in the white. And then I have three boys. So my oldest uh, son, who is Hayden, who's in the red shirt there, is in the Air Force and he is um, deployed in Japan. And that's his wife, Taylor, in front of him. That's his uh, middle, his, his middle brother, Tate, to the, I guess, the left of him, if you're looking at it. And Dexter's there in the middle. My wife is next to Dexter. I'm there uh, to the far right. And then to the far, far right is Will, who is my daughter's um, son. So uh, we were really fortunate last year uh, to go to Japan and be able to uh, visit Hayden and Taylor and check out the Air Force Base there, and then we drove all over the place, did about 1,500 miles in Japan. First time we'd been there, but it was, it was a lot of fun to be there, and the best part was the whole family was together. So we had eight of us there, and, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. So anyways, that, that's a little bit of, uh, uh, about uh, the business, a little bit about myself. Um, why don't we just jump into this, and we'll tell you what we do, for the business and um, talk about our buy and hold strategy that we, we do here in the buy and hold fund and a couple different ways that you can participate uh, with us in all of this. So what we do is we buy homes in the Midwest and right now we're buying in five different cities, three different states. So we have a lot of diversifications, uh, especially on the geographical um, side of, of the, the mixture. We buy affordable homes, so they're $85,000, $100,000 homes. We buy them, we rehab them, we put a tenant in them, and then we hold on to them. And so those, those, all those properties go into our fund, which we'll talk about on that. Um, we buy these homes because they have a great yield on them. So we're looking for just cash flow. We're not real interested in appreciation. We kind of expect that to be something extra that might come along. But most of these homes don't fluctuate up and down in value much. So it, it's really kind of part of the reason why we buy them. We don't have these big ups or downs or timing in the market. We know when we buy these homes, we get a very good cash flow coming out of them. And then we'll get some appreciation out of them over the long period of time, but not, not, you know, not right off the bat and certainly not bought to be in that respect. One of the things that we've done is we've built this portfolio so that we're in good shape no matter what happens in the economy and any kind of a downturn like what kind of we're experiencing right now with the virus um and and we've done that so that we have safety with this this portfolio and and that's what we get when we buy these affordable homes because it's back to the old um adage that everybody needs a place to live right people aren't going to just go they're not going to just get up and walk out of their house and then since they're mostly in the affordable range there's not really a lot of other choices um, from that perspective. And, and that's what gives us so much of the safety that we get from this, this, this overall portfolio. At this point, we've built a portfolio, probably as of today, it's right around about 820 uh, homes. Um, and, and I say about because we're buying about 40 to 50 homes every single month. So we just keep adding and adding to this. We choose the places that we buy by looking at the demographics, the market, and then we look at basically what kind of homes can we buy and have the cash flow that comes through um, from, from that. And that's, that's the way we go about doing that. When we choose an area to buy in, the other thing is, is we, we don't buy unless we have our own brokerage there, our own real estate brokerage, our own property management, and our own construction management. Um, what we've found is that it, between using third parties, such as a third party property manager, or having full time employees like what I'm talking about here that are part of our team, 
is the difference between success and failure for us. So it's super important that we only buy in those areas and that's what we made our criteria um, fit for all of that. So, so today we've got about 65 employees on the team. About 45 of them are here in Reno, Nevada. That's where we're based out of. And then uh, the other 20 are in the, in the Midwest in, in the five different cities. So I'll, I'll mention the five different cities. Akron and Toledo and Cleveland in Ohio there. And then St. Louis and also Birmingham, Alabama. So those are the, the places that we buy. So again, what we're looking for is something that is, gives us a lot of stab stability. Uh, that's not a word. I, I can't make up words on the webinar. Um, a lot of, th th that they are stable <laughs> and, um, and that, you know, we've got that kind of what we call a, a, a safety net by, by building all of this and putting it together. All right, so that gives you an idea of what we, what we own and what we're building with all of this. Let's talk about a few ways that you can participate. So one of the easiest ways to do that is through our fund. So you can come into the fund um, and you uh, put your money in and your investment has a pro rata amount of whatever it is in the fund. As of today, right now, there's about $25 million worth of assets that are in the fund. So whatever you invested would give you your pro rata amount about that from that you would make about eight and a half percent in the fund. And then you also get the depreciation at the end of the year. Um, and that depreciation is worth another about one, one and a half percent because you get to defer your taxes um, from getting that depreciation. So you're gonna make somewhere nine and a half, ten percent 10% if you're in the fund as of today. That's easy, you can write a check, you can wire money in, we give you the offering memorandum, put a subscription uh, agreement together. And then mainly your only thing there is to tell us, do you want to reinvest your money or do you want to take it out as income? So that's a real easy way to do that. You can use your self-directed IRAs. You can use 401ks to do that as well. Those work really well. The only negative to those is that you don't get the depreciation right off because it's a, a tax-free type of investment or tax-deferred type of investment. All right, so your other way to do it is to come in in what we call a secured portfolio. And the way that that works is you'd actually come in and buy a property or property out of the fund. Now, the only reason you'd probably want to do this is because if you were to turn around and take those properties and finance them, we can double the return for you. So you're talking about getting into the returns of 12 to 16 uh, percent on, on, on doing this. So let me tell you how that works. You come in, say you buy a property. We get you to preferred lender. You get mortgages put onto those properties, however many. Let's just call it five for this example. So you buy five. We get the mortgages put on them. And then what we do is we lease those properties back from you when we get that all done. And then we pay you a set monthly income. And that doesn't change from the fact of whether your house is vacant or we have to fix a hot water heater. All those types of things come back onto our pro uh, onto our performance or our responsibility of taking care of those properties. So it, it, it makes it so that you don't have any kind of landlord hassles or surprises of any sort at all. You only have one expense and that's the owner's insurance. And that is the only expense that comes out of your pocket. Now we look at it this way. If we were to sell you five homes, you got financing put on them and then we lease them back so they go back into the portfolio of 820 homes. And then we pay you that set monthly income based off of how all 820 homes are performing out there, not your five. And again, that's why if one of your five goes vacant for the month, you still get paid because it's just one of 820 homes that are out there. So it's a really good way to go, especially with today's um, financing, you can get a 30-year loan with Fannie Mae, 4% interest. It doesn't get really any better than that. And um, we're encouraging people to do that if you're a type of person that, that is okay with getting um, some financing and having debt. It's a very, very safe way to go because of the way that we've, we've structured that. And then the last way that you can participate is to do a 1031 exchange. And this is when you sell an investment piece of property, it can be anything, land, commercial building, 
uh, a rental home, anything at all, as long as it's investment property. You put it through a 1031 exchange, which then you don't have to pay any of the income taxes uh, that would be due for that. Um, and we do the same thing. What we would do is we'd sell you X amount of homes out of the fund. Uh, we lease them back from you, pay you a set monthly income, and we take over all the responsibilities of making that happen. Now, there's a few other rules that kind of go along with the 1031s. And so if that's something that you're interested in doing, we can go through all of that with you. Um, if you go about financing with the 1031, there's a few more things that we have to do as well. But for tonight, the main thing here is just kind of go over how everything works in kind of the high level. And then we're happy to, you know, of course, get together with you and answer any questions. And we'll answer questions here tonight as well um, if you have some and, um, and we'll take it from there. So that probably does a pretty good job of giving everybody an overview. Why don't we go ahead, Ashley, and open it up for a couple questions and, and take it from there, okay? Sure, that was a good segue. So if anyone would like to ask questions, um, feel free to use the Q&A tool that's at the bottom of your screen. Those just go to us, they're not shared publicly, and we'll answer them out loud so you can just hang out and relax. Um, and it looks like we have a question here. Um, why would someone invest in the fund over the custom portfolio or vice versa? All right. So, so really, if you're going to be using, like, let's say your IRA um, to do it, you want to go into the fund. That's the best way to do it. When you start buying properties, putting your name on the title, it gets really uh, messy on that. So that, that would be one reason. The other reason that you may want to buy the properties and not go into the fund is because you can get the financing done on them today. And that's probably the most important thing there. Um, you could buy properties from us, put your name on the title, and if you like that, that's fine. Your return is not gonna be quite as good. It's gonna be between the seven and 8% range. We really only encourage people if they're gonna do that to do it for the reason of financing. And so then the reason becomes, if you're gonna do it with that, you can get the financing and double that return as compared to what you're going to get inside the fund. Um, and, and, and that, those are probably your two kind of, you know, differentiating deals on, on what we're talking about there. And obviously if you're doing a 1031 exchange, I will say this last part on that is through a 1031 exchange, when you exchange, whatever your other property that you sold was titled in, the new properties that you buy have to be titled the same way. That satisfies the 1031 exchange, and that's the only way we can do it. You can't go into the fund with the 1031 exchange. So on that. All right, let's see. Um, another question is, and you kind of touched on this already, but who manages the properties? Can you go into a little bit more detail about how that is set up? Yeah, so they're, they're, they're full-time employees of, of Hughes Private Capital, and um, they're based in every one of those cities. So um, that's kind of a, 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 it's just so important that we have our own people on our own team taking care of that, because um, if you just don't, you just end up dealing with so many problems that are out there. Before, when we had it up to about 300 homes, we hadn't hit our economies of scale to where we could actually hire our own people. And um, I just gotta tell you, it was miserable. It was absolutely miserable having third party property managers out there. And I'm not trying to throw those guys under the bus, but it, it just, it's just really, really difficult to find the good, the good people to, to do that, what you really need done. Um, and it has been night and day from that perspective. So that's, like I said, it's one of our criteria that we set, we will not buy homes in any one area unless we have all three of those together. A real estate brokerage set up, property management, and construction management um, that are all part of our team uh, and work for us full time. All right, let's see. Uh, what is the minimum investment? So if you're in the fund, it's $25,000 to get in. Um, if you're buying a home, you've got to have enough to buy the home. If you're, if you're financing it, we, we find it about as a down payment for every dollar you put down, you can buy $3 worth of home. So if you put $100,000 down, we're going to be able to get you $300,000 worth of homes um, on that. So minimum might be, call it $35,000 or so 
to buy maybe a hundred thousand dollar home because that that's going to put you right there in that that minimum. Well, it looks like that's all the questions we have for tonight. But do you have any final thoughts or or points you'd like to share? I, I think we've covered most all of it tonight. Like I said, you know, um, we know that it's not always easy when we're on these type of webinars. They're really just they're just really set up to give you that quick overview. So get in touch with us. We'd be happy to. Uh, make a phone call, do a Zoom call. We'd love to meet with you in person if you're here in Reno. That would be terrific, you know. Um, we had our second meeting today with an investor face-to-face -face since, you know, this whole thing started. And it has been really nice to, to get back to a little bit of that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, Ashley. Um, I know you're going to put up our contact information, all that stuff, and, and take them through that. So, anyways, thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. And, uh, Hopefully we made that short and painless for you. And um, we hope to talk to you in the future. Oops. Um, sorry about that. Click the wrong button. Um, like Greg mentioned, we're going to put up a screen here in just a moment that has our team's contact information. Um, a lot of these questions are better answered in one-on-one -on -one conversations. Also, if you'd like to submit your information to us, um, like your preferred contact information, like your phone number or email address, you can use the Q&A tool down at the bottom to do that. Again, that just comes to us and we collect that information. But that's all we have for you tonight. And my colleague is going to put up our contact information in just in a second. Um, thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your day.